Hello, everyone. My name is Kuni. I'm a Cardano SPO. I'm proposing the project uh, DID solution for local governments in the category of other prison DID mass scale adoption. As a participating member, blockchain entrepreneur, Yama, Cardano ambassador, Utah. These three people are participating in this project. で、で、ま、え、行政の方での Hi everyone, my name is Hans Chen. I'm the team leader. We are Team Platypus. Four of us have lived and studied in five continents. We know the credential problem firsthand. Leo is going to tell us about his story. Thanks, Hans. So my name is Leo Lloyd. Uh, I'm a full stack developer for the project and I also have a really strong personal connection to the problem. So just to give a little background about me, when I was 12 years old, I was living in Japan and like I'm sure many other 12 year olds are, I was really frustrated and bored at school. It was too slow and the things that I wanted to study were not available to me. So I decided to drop out of middle school and for the next two years, I homeschooled myself online using free courses and was accepted into university overseas at 15. So this in itself uh, required a lot of luck, actually. Uh, first of all, because there were no options for what I wanted to do in Japan. Aside from it, I had to move to New Zealand by myself. And I was still forced to take standardized tests because that was the only accredited option available to me. As you can imagine, other curious kids with a real passion and desire to learn will not be so lucky. And instead, they will still be stuck in a system that punishes their individuality, their creativity, and does not encourage them to keep learning. So the problem is, how do we change that? On to you, Austin. Thanks, Leo. Uh, my name is Austin, and I'm a DevOps engineer. I manage the infrastructure supporting our proposal. Uh, the solution we bring to you is your own badge passport in the form of a digital wallet. Verifiable credentials is one of the three pillars of self-sovereign identity or SSI technology, together with uh, decentralized identifiers and uh, distributed ledger technology or blockchain. This badge passport will enable you to carry your achievements with you wherever you go, uh, where you can share it privately and securely. Verifiable credentials are private, tamper-proof, verifiable anywhere at any time, and hence portable. Uh, over to you, Bernardo. Thanks, Austin. That was great. My name is Bernardo, and I'm acting as the product manager for this project. 
Our team has been embedded in the program space for years. We've operated a maker space that provided non-accredited courses to hundreds of students, and we work closely with teachers associations and STEM program facilitators. Our product team, which you just met, is working closely with the end user and our development phases are based on real user needs. We are building for constant feedback loops. The focus here is to de-risk as much as we can and build lean. We expect to run our first proof of concept with a partner STEM facilitator that we secured already in the first three months. Based on their feedback and iterations, we'll launch our MVP with selected K-12 students in Victoria in the first six months and launch at full capabilities at the end of the nine-month mark. We don't expect the project to stop here. After we wrap up this local launch using the Fund6 resources, we expect to roll this product outside our partner tech school across Victoria, Australia, and within the network of maker spaces in which we're part of across four continents. On to you, Hans. Our vision is personalized learning at internet scale. Um, the KPI is 50,000 uh, passport installation in year 2022. Um, education is the passport to the future. Please vote for us. Thank you for listening. Hello, my name is Guilherme Pereira, and I'm pleased to present you Academy and our project, the Academy Lifelong Learning Suite. We believe that learning is at the center of the human experience. From childhood until adulthood, we're always learning and using tools to do so. Although in comparison to our technological progress and the progress we've made in tools for learning and teaching and even storing knowledge, we're far behind. Essentially, we're using the teaching and learning methods of early industrial society. When it comes to education, we actually, to a large extent, have antagonized the very tools that could help us take this next step towards modernizing and making more efficient the tools that we use for learning and studying. Academy's mission, in short, is to create these learning tools for the 21st century. We want to change the taboo behind mobile devices and learning space, and even the way humans interact with academic tasks and how they share and absorb knowledge. We would like to do that through using the latest technology safely and efficiently to manage what humanity has of greatest value, knowledge. What does this now mean from a very practical perspective? Let me explain this with personal experience. Looking back, there were so many things I've learned, read, experienced, but honestly, most of this got somehow lost along the way. This is where Academy Suite comes in. Uh, Academy allows us to capture, structure, refresh, and retrieve information in different ways. In a basic way, later on in a guided and also gamified version. Academy is also uh, aiming to become the storage and sharing place for our certificates and proof of skills. In the first step, Academy allows us to input individual information, but then it also encourages a complete ecosystem of contributors, adding curricula, infographics, animation, links, tests, guidance, and games, all being part of an emerging marketplace. This is why Academy Suit will be built on top of a powerful foundation of digital identity, blockchain, tokenomics, and strict data privacy. The Academy idea was born by a core team of innovators, seeing this as one of the next areas of promising global disruption. Guillaume Pereira, student of technology, entrepreneur, innovator at Senai Institute in Sao Paulo, Brazil. Jonas Weinberger, student of international law and research assistant at Brussels School of Governance. And myself, Heinz Gassner, contributing as senior advisor after more than 30 years of innovation leadership positions in industry, plus our professional network of education partners, UX, UI experts, and uh, development teams. So finally, let's talk about our project timeline, what we achieved so far, and where we want to go from here. What we've done in the last months is we've completed the research and design phase for our minecarts MVP. What is minecarts? 
It is one of the functional tools that will form part of our larger academy suite. Minecarts combines mind maps and flashcards into a simple but powerful learning tool. What do you get from all of this? Essentially, you can make traditional learning easy on yourself. While this is not a revolution in itself, it will help us reach a broad audience and build a solid foundation for the further development of our project. This further development goes far beyond Minecarts, which will be one of the tools making up the functional layer of Academy Suite. These tools will be seamlessly integrated into a social network that will give rise to our platform economy based on digital identity and blockchain technology. We're setting up with clear targets for what to achieve in this fund six. Within three months, among other things, we will have completed our team and put all foundational architecture in place. Within six months, we want to complete development for our minecarts MVP. Within 12 months, we want to achieve a minimum number of downloads and have several institutional partnerships in place. Of this, we'll provide a solid foundation to continue building the Academy Suite. Essentially, we are working on this project because we believe that with being freed from many of the repetitive tasks we had to engage in in the past, the 21st century must make us into philosophers and creators, giving us the opportunity to pursue our most meaningful interests. To this, we want to contribute in a major way with the Academy Suite. You can learn more about our project on academysuite.com and find us in the Atala Prism Digital Identity Challenge in Fund 6. Thank you. Hi, I'm Maury Shank, and I'm here to talk about my company, Learner Shapes, proposal in Fund 6 for Project Catalyst. Uh, in the Italiprism DID Mass Adoption Challenge. Our proposal is about universal skills authentication. The problem we're solving is that individuals need a trusted way to communicate their skills for work, education, and other purposes. This is driven by the rapid increase in online learning, changing jobs, and associated reskilling requirements. What we're building is an open protocol for universal authentication of individual skills based on Italiprism. This is really important for employment, education, on-the-job reskilling, and lots of other purposes. There's four components to what we're building. A flexible skills framework. This is a universal framework to record skills, exactly how they're talked about in human language, rather than a fixed skills taxonomy. You can read lots more about what we mean by that in our proposal. Second, uh, authentication of a personal skills graph, the skills that an individual has accessible via a REST API third-party skills authentication of any one or more skills on a personal skills graph, again, authenticated by a REST API, and then an application for skills entry and verification. The team that we put together for this is really strong. My startup learner shape is building the world's first AI-based open source learning infrastructure. We have expertise in skills, machine learning, and web applications. You can see some of our code available open source on GitHub. And we've built really strong partnerships for this project. I'm a director of PeopleCert, which is a global certification company and a really important route to market for us. And they are cooperating with us on this project. We've partnered with Gimbal Labs for Cardano development expertise. And we're working with other skill certification projects in the Catalyst community that can use the universal skills authentication protocol that we're developing. Uh, the project plan is we're building a full proof of concept with the four components that I mentioned before. The full implementation of this is going to require the release of the Atala Prism API and SDK, which hasn't happened yet. Uh, once we've built the proof of concept, there will be many directions for extending this. Uh, additional functionality in the verification application, integration with other authentication technologies like iOS 6. Apple is releasing a personal ID feature and ADA incentives for use of the skills framework. In terms of measuring return on intent, because this is a stage as a proof of concept, the key RI metrics are delivery of the features that I've told you about with the promised authentication functions. And beyond that, uh, we will support clear metrics uh, based upon extent of usage of our authentication framework. So in summary, 
What we're building is an open protocol for universal authentication of individual skills. This is a key technology for the workplace and for education. Our team has deep technical and market experience to deliver this. You can find out more by checking out our proposal on IdeaScale, where there are lots of links to our work. Please support us with your vote in Fund 6. Thank you. Hi, my name is Cliff, and this is a biometric smart card for the Atala Prism decentralized ID. Now, the problem is, how do we drive mass scale adoption to the Atala Prism? And our solution is to use a biometric smart card. Now, this is a three factor authorization card. It uses a fingerprint. and a pin, and the card is a physical third factor. So it's something that I am, my identity is my fingerprint, something that I know is the pin, and something that I have, which is the card. So now that we can establish a decentralized identity and people can self-authenticate, we can store our cryptos, stable coins, verified credentials, and other personal data on this card. It's encrypted on the chip and to the chain. So this is a generation one card. One of our meetup members showed this to me in 2018, and he asked me if I could help him with this card. So I said, you know what, Mr. Fu, this is a great card, but I think we need to fix a few things. First of all, we want to make this a metal card, I toughen it up for like the third world. Let's make a touch screen, make the display bigger. Let's put in a bigger battery and bigger memory so people can actually use this for like health records or something. And so Mr. Fu agreed. And now in 2021, we have been selected as one of the top 15 finalists for the Global CBDC Challenge in Singapore. It's sponsored by the Monetary Authority of Singapore, and IOG is one of the finalists also. So I talked to uh, Mr. Fu. He's uh, a veteran from the telecom industry. He helped NCR with their global infrastructure for ATMs. And his partner is uh, Dr. Hawk. He helped Citibank roll out their global ATM infrastructure. And so what they wanted to do is get some help to roll out the Gen 2. And I am trying to push this out there, and I think the Atala Dids is the perfect thing that this card can do. Now, we were recently selected as a finalist, but the thing is, this card can perform card-to-card -card transactions on or offline with zero fees. And that's why we stood out amongst our competition. So currently there are companies and banks that are putting out biometric cards. However, they are centralized authorities. Also in Africa, they are rolling out biometric cards for nation, national IDs. So but what we can do and how we can measure our success is the upgrades to this Gen 1 card, Gen 2 will be metal, there'll be more battery life and more memory. And we can customize this to the Tala decentralized ID ecosystem. So my name is Cliff, and this is how we're going to help mass scale adoption and help define self-sovereignty for millions of people. Thank you very much.
Hi, my name is Mike Dietrich and I'm the founder of Edutainment. We at Edutainment are combining education, entertainment and blockchain to build engaging and meaningful play-to-learn and earn games. Our first project is a game-based learning and collaboration platform for eventually all kinds of subjects and professions. The platform is community-based, meaning that cultural hubs need to form inside the platform to create and govern content together. We are utilizing Atala Prism's DIT solution as a means to log into the platform, keep track of your performance and your governance rights. Access to education is still a privileged thing to have. Modern educational systems are too rigid and formalized for today's complex communities and diversifying requirements. That's why we believe in contextualized and playful learning. In most schools, a teacher explains the subject over and over again while the students just sit and listen, maybe taking notes and asking questions. But wouldn't it be nice to test and experiment again? Wouldn't it be nice to explore an immersive environment where you can actually learn what you want and in your pace? Wouldn't it be nice to be allowed to fail, only to immediately get support and guidance on how to improve and eventually succeed? This is why we are creating a low-poly 3D sandbox MMO for language learning. Language is one of the most crucial factors to uh, uh, overcome national and cultural boundaries. We are starting with the most spoken languages, being English, Arabic, Spanish, French, Mandarin, Russian and Hindi, and added what we figured to be the most useful and valuable languages for Cardano's early adopters. These are Japanese, accounting for Cardano's roots, Amharic and Oromo for Ethiopia, and Swahili for Tanzania. In our platform, every language has its own territory, where you have a bustling city full of quests, interactions and other players. You can connect with these players to go on adventures together or just practice to speak with them. You do not have to search and pay attention to practice your speech, just connect with your fellow learners. Outside the city are the level grounds with community-made levels, which you can explore to f further solidify your skills. We are developing the most intuitive 3D level and content editor framework, which is open source and allows every user to seamlessly produce their own content through procedural modeling. It's all, it also allows integration by other game devs due to its modular nature. The editor stores level information in transaction metadata, thus making it safe and efficient. Every user gets verified credentials attached to their DIT as proof of proficiency in a language or their native tongue. In doing so, they are eligible to govern the content of their proficient subjects and partake in its DAO. Furthermore, every user gets one virtual plot of land inside the game to link to their real-life identity and get visibility for their website, services or products. We want to encourage people collaborating, sharing and helping each other. So we convert all revenue streams of the platform to ADA and redistribute it to a treasury, which then <laughs> provides liquidity to swap the platform's native token. So you can learn while playing and contribute to your living costs. I am a first cohort Plutus pioneer, cultural scientist, musician and teacher. One of our team members, better known as Hungry Proton, is a full-stack developer and already built the main tools that we need on top of the Godot engine. Our MVP consists of up to 12 language territories, each providing enough content to reach language level A1 to A2. We expect to deliver the MVP of the level editor framework in 3 to 6 months, following with the MVP of the platform in the next 12 to 18 months. The platform's time horizon might change a bit, as we are quite reliant on the rollout of Atala Prism. Our ROIs are measuring the number of subjects offered and the overall language level that you are able to reach from just within the platform. For every subject, we are reaching out to groups of individuals that are native speakers of one of the first needed languages and also show a high degree of diversity and professionalism. These founding teams are needed to build a solid foundation for the community to thrive upon. So. Help us build the education system of the future. To get in touch, kindly visit edutainment.com. Check out our proposal in the Atala Prism and Developer Ecosystem Challenge or simply write a mail to edutainment at protonmail.com. Thank you for your time and keep on enjoying the Cardano Summit. Hi, I'm Brunelio, a component of my smart wheel team and a co-founder of Golgi Stake Pool, 
I'm here to explain you our idea that we call my smart wheel. It is born in order to satisfy a simple human need. Think about it. We are, we are made up of memories and thoughts, and then it is clear that we want to transfer them to the future generation. Moreover, when we die, it is necessary to transfer assets and properties to third parties. But there is a problem. In fact, today it means a tool that collect and certify our wheels. This is why we want to implement my smart wheel. To explain our project, we have to talk about the two scenarios that we keep in mind. The first one is the pilot. The second one is the target. In Found 6, we want to implement the first scenario. What about the pilot uh, scenario? The pilot or MVP is a software that is integrated with Data Lab Prism, and it could be an application for smartphones that allows you to upload and record a wheel and then transfer it when a determined event happens, like birthday or day of the year, like Christmas. All of the wheel that could be poem, picture, video, audio recording, an idea, a digital painting, is then transformed in an NFT. For what concern is that the target scenario that is our future object, it is more complex because it could allow you to transfer properties. We are talking about the last wheel. It is complex because my smart wheel should be integrated with oracles. The functionality of my smart wheel solutions are enabled by the Cardano ecosystem through key components, mobile application for user, Atala Prism for digital identity, Bluetooth backend for smart contract and cloud services. Our target is different depending on the scenario. Clearly in the pilot MVP scenario, the target is the retail, and we are thinking about the Cardano ecosystem as a tester. For what concern is that the target scenario, the target could be the financial institution, insurance, bank, and professional categories like lawyers, notaries. What about this that the milestone plan of our project? We expect to release an alpha software in three months, and then it will be tested by the Golgi de delegators. With the beta software, we extend the test session to Cardano community. The tester will be also rewarded. In six months, we extend we expect to launch the pilot on the entire Cardano ecosystem and start with the advertising. We expect also to verify and measure the return on or intention directly on the Cardano ecosystem. The two areas of interest that we want to measure are the business and the technical one. With the business, we want to measure the value proposition and the customer experience. With the technical, instead, we want to measure the contingency and the sustainability in the end-to-end -end cycles. The team of my smart drill is composed by Italian manager with many years in, uh, of experience in management consulting, but we are looking for other technical components so if you want to know more about my smart wheel, you can find all the information here. And if you want to support our, our team, write us at the Golgi's mail. Thank you really a lot for your attention. See you soon. Hi, my name is Martin. I'm a software developer in Berlin, and I'm just getting started with Cardano. My proposal for Fund 6 is Basic Income Token. I've submitted it for the Atala Prism Challenge. The problems this proposal addresses are how do we get people interested in getting a DID and get them to engage not just with the DID provider they registered with, but also the larger Cardano ecosystem, and how do we get the ID providers to cooperate, not just use Cardano as a service. My solution is simple, uh, just give them free stuff. So a token that can be minted by anyone with a verified ID at the same constant rate.
no fancy math or governance models. So, seems weird. It's hyperinflationary by default, has no use case value. But I think that just having such a token as part of the Cardano platform, we are enable others to build them. So I view this as an experiment in economics and the IDI adoption. So my plan is to deploy a simple Plotus contract soon, uh, hopefully in a couple of months, and wait for Babel fees to enable the full functionality where people don't have to have any ADA to interact with the system. And we'll see how that works out. Uh, I'm looking for people who think that this is a good idea, and I'm also working on a another proposal uh, where this platform is used uh, as an alternative to patents. Any questions? Uh, you can find me via email or Discord. Thanks. Hello, Catalyst and Cardano community. Uh, my name is Sean Jensen, co-founder and CEO of Profiler. Uh, we're a startup in Switzerland focused on data privacy, giving you control and agency of your data and your online experiences, but also helping you build a better relationship with brands by sharing data responsibly so they can deliver great products and services to you. We're very proud to be awarded in Fund 5 for one of our POC privacy projects. And we'd like to show you today a couple more of our exciting projects for Cardano and for the Catalyst community. A key project for us is digital identity. Uh, as per the introduction to the company, if we're focused on helping you share your data responsibly with brands, we need to ensure that your digital identity is safe. So for our registration and login process, we will be using Atala Prism. We also have a KYC process in our platform because our business model allows us to share revenue with you as an individual. So for that process, we'll be using the digital identity technologies to help us in the KYC and AML compliance. A third point is legal data protection rights. So on our platform, we help you to assert your privacy rights with any brand in the world whether it's a right to be forgotten or a right to information, uh, we help you create a auditable track of your decisions with the brand to say, I asked for my data to be deleted. Do I now have an auditable trail to prove to regulators that this was my decision? This auditable trail in the blockchain also helps brands to become compliant. So it's a win-win for both brands and people. We look forward to working with the community and we offer you to join us and be part of something big. We have exciting projects as you'll see from the next several videos and we love the community contribution to everything we do. Thank you. Hey guys, Pace Team here, which is Project Accelerating the Catalyst Ecosystem. Today we wanna to talk about some of our proposals. So what are the problems that the Pace team are currently trying to resolve? So Project Catalyst is complex. There's a lot of moving parts. There's currently no easy access to the growing amount of data, which would be really valuable for the community tools and initiatives that are going on. And finally, the ecosystem needs high participation and engagement and an increasing amount of diversity and inclusion for it to reach its full potential. To help meet some of the, these problems and resolve them, We've been creating a set of resources and open source tools to support and grow the Project Catalyst ecosystem. As an example, we have the community list, which we made at projectcatalyst.org slash community, that helps to bring together proposers with people who are looking to collaborate, whether that's with new ideas or existing teams. The second thing we've already started to look at is some of the resource management. So how can we bring together resources and make them easier to manage and also consider governance so that IHK can be less burdened in the future and introduce the community so then the community has more control of that resource manage management over time. We have an example of that at resources.projectcatalyst.org. The ultimate idea is that the more, the more quality tools and good processes we have will help to move governance from IOHK over to the community at a faster rate. The team as it stands is myself, who's got five plus years as a web and mobile developer. I've been a proposer since Fund3, and I've also been very active in the community with Swarm Discord Catalyst School. There's also Jacob, who's got a political scientist and business psychologist background. He's been involved since Fund4 and has also been very active in the community and is currently a Swarm Core team member. 
Recently, we've also got some partnerships. So we're also now partnering with Lido Nation, which is Stephanie and Darlington. Darlington brings seven years of DevOps experience, making it a perfect match for our plans to help to create an open source community API for all of the Project Catalyst data. Our project plans at the moment, we've already been funded for our Fund 5 proposals for four different ones. But our three kind of um, core focus areas at the moment is identity, which is the collaborators list, as I mentioned, but also community credentials. How can we start integrating all of the Atala Prism functionality into the community projects so they have an easy way to demonstrate and take advantage of verifiable credentials and DID, which are the core building blocks of self-sovereign identity. The second part is proposals. How can we bring together all of the proposal data from the start up until the finish, finish of proposals when they're funded and they need to be audited? How can we also make it easy for proposers to update and maintain that information over time when it starts to leave idea scale and become part of a wider process? And the final kind of thing we're looking at is education resources, which we've already made a start on from the resources.projectcatalyst.org um, link I mentioned earlier. To help track our return on intention for these different proposals, we've kind of got four main areas that apply to all of our proposals. So the first is we're looking at metrics on usage and engagement for the pace created tools. Are they actually being used? Second is making sure that our data and tools are open source so people can easily extend it and build stuff up by themselves. The third is how is that data and tools used within other community projects? If we can see our data is being used by five different tools, that's a really good sign that we're creating something that's valuable for the ecosystem. And finally, community education, whether that's through conversations, the resources and tooling, how can we increase that rate of adoption and learning throughout the ecosystem? And that's it from the PACE team. So you can follow us on Twitter or join the conversation on Discord. Our website is projectcatalyst.org. But if you want to go more into the details on our proposals, you can find them at pace.projectcatalyst.org. Thank you very much for listening. And hopefully I'll see some of you at the summit. So thank you very much. Hi, I'm Brunelio, a component of my smart grid team and a co-founder of Gold Stake Pool. I'm here to explain you our idea that we call my smart wheel. It is born in order to satisfy a simple human need. Think about it. We are, we are made up of memories and thoughts, and then it is clear that we want to transfer them to the future generation. Moreover, when we die, it is necessary to transfer assets and properties to third parties. But there is a problem. In fact, today it needs a tool that collect and certify our wheels. This is why we want to implement My Smart Wheel. To explain our project, we have to talk about the two scenarios that we keep in mind. The first one is the pilot. The second one is the target. In Found 6, we want to implement the first scenario. What about the pilot uh, scenario? The pilot or MVP is a software that is integrated with Data Lab Prism, and it could be an application for smartphones that allows you to upload and record a wheel and then transfer it when a determined event happens, like birthday or day of the year, like Christmas. All of the wheel that could be poem, picture, video, audio recording, an idea, a digital painting, is then transformed in an NFT. But what concern is that the target scenario that is our future object, it is more complex because it could allow you to transfer properties. We are talking about the last wheel. It is complex because my smart wheel should be integrated with oracles. The functionality of my smart wheel solutions are enabled by the Cardano ecosystem through key components, mobile application for user, Atala Prism for digital identity, Bluetooth backend for smart contract and cloud services. Our target is different depending on the scenario. Clearly in the pilot MVP scenario, the target is the retail, and we are thinking about the Cardano ecosystem as a tester. For what concern is that the target scenario, the target could be the financial institution, insurance, bank, and professional categories like lawyers, notaries. What about instead the milestone plan of our project? 
we expect to release an alpha software in three months, and then it will be tested by the Golgi de delegators. With the beta software, we extend the test session to Cardano community. The tester will be also rewarded. In six months, we extend we expect to launch the pilot on the entire Cardano ecosystem and start with the advertising. We expect also to verify and measure the return on bet or intention directly on the Cardano ecosystem. The two areas of interest that we want to measure are the business and the technical one. With the business, we want to measure the value proposition and the customer experience. With the technical, instead, we want to measure the contingency and the sustainability in the end-to-end -end cycles. The team of My Smart Drill is composed by Italian manager with many years in, uh, of experience in management consulting. But we are looking for other technical components. So if you want to know more about my smart wheel, you can find all the information here. And if you want to support our, our team, write us at the Golgi's mail. Thank you really a lot for your attention. See you soon.